Hey guys, Jess here from Knockout Print Shop. Today I have for you my November 2019 reflection. End of each month, I use our reflection insert to kind of go over how the month went, and that helps me set goals and intentions for the following month. So November was a very interesting month. Um, some really good things, some like not so good things. From a business perspective, we were kind of on a little bit of a roller coaster. So the first part of the month was a little bit struggly for us, um, again, from a business standpoint. And then it got a little bit better. So as you know, obviously November leads up to Black Friday. So most people, understandably so, don't shop until Black Friday. Um, so we were like, you know, when you're in your own business and you're not seeing sales roll in, you get a little bit nervous. So once we ran our pre-Black Friday sale, everything was a little bit better. So that kind of set the tone for the whole month is when you run a business and you're like, oh shit, we don't have any sales right now. You start to get a little nervous. Even when you have your finances in order, you have savings and different things set up to create buffers, it's still not something you like to see. So when you have that kind of in the back of your mind, um, it kind of, I don't know, just kind of sets a not so great tone for the whole month. So that's my caveat to start off my whole reflection. Now I did do this reflection, I think last week. Um, so I need to refresh my memory as to what I wrote down. So we'll, you'll get to hear, you know, the usual just musings. Okay. So first part, as you know, is the memories and highlights. So the way I kind of think back to that, as I, I scroll, let's say scroll, you can't really scroll through your planner. I go through and I look over here at my little highlight section. I use our little grid bar, uh, grid bar, grid paper, sidebar sticker to write down my highlights. I'm really pumped because next year, so if you haven't seen in our shop, we have one that actually says weekly highlights and it has lines. So I'm pretty excited to use that, but I've been doing this and it works just fine. So I just kind of like go over and remind myself of the things that went on over the weeks and what things each week I felt were kind of highlights of that week. And then when I reflect back, I think of what are like my three major ones because I'm obsessed with doing things in threes. So one would be, I went on a coffee date with a fellow fitness professional named Vanessa. Her and I spent a good amount of hours, I think three or four hours just chatting about life, getting to know each other, um, talking about the fitness industry. And it was interesting because her and I have some different views, um, different perspectives on different things. So it was nice to be in a conversation with somebody where you don't agree on everything because then you can learn from each other. And it just is good to have a mindset of being open to different views than your own and exposing yourself to those kinds of people that can help you expand your kind of view of the world and different things like that. So really enjoyed connecting with her. Um, I also had a call with um, a colleague, um, one of a fellow coach, this guy, Mike, who runs an organization, a fitness organization with other coaches, is kind of like a coaching community for uh, strength and fitness coaches. And out of the blue, he wanted to touch base with me, see how I was doing, kind of chat a little bit about, you know, my transition out of the fitness industry and what we're doing now. And it was really interesting to have a conversation with him. Him and I closed our gyms at the same time and have some similar views on our frustrations in the fitness industry. So it was cool to kind of like have a conversation slash be, slash be interviewed with him, um, by him, I should say, and just kind of talk freely about my opinions on things and kind of looking back now, having hindsight and seeing, you know, things I could have done differently, how my perspective has changed, all of that. So it's always fun to be able to verbally have a conversation that's reflective with somebody because I tend to think better out loud, which is actually why I like doing these reflection videos, even though I know they might not be the most interesting thing to watch. I really process things verbally um, more so than written. So again, being able to have that conversation with him really actually helped me understand some of my process as well. So I put that down that happened like the second or third week of the month. And then, um, I joined a coaching mentor group. So again, a fitness strength coaching, uh, group called the coaches corner. And we have weekly calls on various topics related to health and fitness coaching and just being a better coach and things like that. So while I'm not actively coaching a ton of people right now, um, it's really nice to be in a position where I can help other coaches after being in the industry um, from a fitness perspective for over 15 years and then also my psych background and my life coaching background to give um, those that are still in the industry or currently into the, the fitness industry and working on building their business and becoming better coaches. It's been really cool to take my perspective and my training and help 
other coaches grow. So it's really something I'm realizing I truly enjoy. So that was a cool experience to have this group of people to connect with. So we can see that my theme here has been connecting. So that's where all my memories were around. We did some other fun things throughout the month that didn't have to do with that. Um, had our little staycation with the holiday break and went uh, to coffee with a friend, did our Facebook first Facebook Live for the print shop um, and just some other things. So, but my favorite memories were connecting. Okay, so then the accomplishments, the three things, this is kind of a lie because I put this down preemptively because I did this uh, worksheet before the actual end of the month because I thought I was going to film this video sooner. So this one task wasn't done at that time. So I signed up for YNAB. So, or sorry, I started YNAB. So I started the trial for YNAB at the beginning of November and um, instantly became obsessed with YNAB. So if you don't know what YNAB it is, what YNAB is, it stands for You Need a Budget and it is a budgeting software and educational tool. And I have been seeing people talk about this um, for quite some time. If you guys don't follow Ashley um, Elise, or it used to be Ashley TIA here on YouTube, I will click, I'll put a link to her videos about YNAB down below. She actually works for the company now creating content, but I'm like a late adopter to things and I'm super skeptical of almost anything anybody is selling me. So when I kept hearing about YNAB, I was like, okay, whatever. Okay, whatever. Sure. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to pay for a software that's going to help me budget. But, you know, I started to get intrigued by it. I had a system with Excel and using Mint.com that was free, using the free version of David Ram of Dave Ramsey's Every Dollar. So it's kind of like piecemealing my things together and it worked. It was totally free, but I'm like, is this the most efficient way to do things? And I was like, I'm just curious about YNAB. So I realized on their site, they have a 34 day trial, which is brilliant by the way, because if you're getting into budgeting, you wanna be able to start a 30, I think the 34 day time period is super brilliant because of the fact that obviously there's typically 30 to 31 days in a month, but you most likely want to start your trial. If you do this, I would recommend starting your trial a couple days before the month, the new month starts. That way you can get in there and get used to it. And then you also have an experience at the end of the month, being able to wrap the month up after your, you know, bank accounts reconcile and all of that. So it actually gives you a full on one month experience of budgeting with their systems. I think that's super clever. I don't know if that's why they did it, but I think it's brilliant. Um, and you'll see in my goals for December was to officially purchase and sign up for it. Spoiler alert, I did. So I I'm like a nerd for it. I love it. I check it every single day. And Matt's like, what are you even checking? We don't spend money. I'm like, I don't care. I need to check it and make sure it's all right. So I love YNAB. Other accomplishment was taking our holiday break. Matt and I are not super great at taking time off and we do make sure that we close the shop from Thursday Thanksgiving through Sunday. Now this was started when I owned my gym because I um, decided I needed to be better at taking time off to enjoy the holidays and because at the time when we were owning the gym and running the print shop at the same time, this has just been like part of our annual time off thing. So we always take off that time. Honestly, we were kind of bored. We probably should have went home to Chicago. Um, we are not good at just doing nothing. <laughs> so it was, it was nice to just take a breather from like filling orders and creating. Um, but you know, it wasn't the most thrilling break. Uh, the third thing was schedule my colonoscopy. So if you've been watching my videos, you know, like for the past year, I've been struggling with um, recurrent GI issues. I was about a couple of years, two decades ago, diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. It's a big, long story. Anyways, I've been symptom free for a long time this past year. Um, has been kind of a hot mess for my poor gut and had some testing done and the testing showed that I needed to go get colonoscopy. I'm feeling actually a hundred million times better. I don't even really have any symptoms anymore, of course, but my doctor does want me to get a colonoscopy. So at the time I wrote this, I would have had it scheduled, but I didn't. I just scheduled that today, which is December something, third, fourth. So that's like a little bit of a preemptive accomplishment, but I did do it. Okay. So lessons that I learned. Lesson number one is I need in-person interaction and connection. So I realized that I love what I, okay, I have a love hate with social media. The one thing I love about social media is it has given me an opportunity to virtually meet people that I can then meet in person, which I think is excellent. And sometimes it makes me think, how did we meet people before social media in the same like like-minded groups? I guess it just happened organically and we didn't think about it. Um, but I need that. I need um, in-person connection, that sense of community. That's something that I've been really struggling with the past 18 months from all of our moving and feeling like we don't have like 
community, friendships, a social interaction. So this is like essential to my health. So this is something I'm really going to be focusing on for the uh, new year. Number two is I really enjoy creating videos. So video content is probably one of my favorite things to create because I love to talk. I like to talk a lot. I like to um, share my experiences with people. I like to communicate information with people. And I really, really enjoy being on camera and chatting with people. My favorite kind is live streams where I get to in interact with my psych background and having been a psychotherapist, my favorite thing to do is have conversations and interact with people. I know that's not always feasible because we all have different schedules, so most people prefer pre-recorded videos, but I'm really realizing I enjoy creating videos a lot and I should dedicate more time to doing that versus some other forms of social media and content creation. Um, number three is that I just need to start. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure all of us can relate to sometimes getting hung up on where do I start? How do I start? It needs to look a certain way. I have to have these 17 steps done before I start. And I do this to myself a lot in different things in different areas. And it's been something I've struggled with on and off for my whole life is starting. Like it's that like initial thing when it comes to creation, um, there's certain parts of my life. This doesn't get in my way when it's like starting a new business for whatever reason, I'm like, what's the worst can ha that can happen? Let's just do it. And I put all the, you know, get my strategy, put all the things in place and go for it. What I'm referring to here is honestly, the funniest thing is it has to do with videos. I've been, you know, last year, my goal for 2019 was to start a podcast, recorded a couple, uh, test episodes and was like, mm, this isn't for me. Then I keep toying around with this idea of doing a, um, a YouTube outside of the knockout print shop YouTube, more one of me sharing different kinds of information, whether it's health or fitness or finance, food, um, you know, slow living, intentional living mindset stuff, all the other stuff that I have, you know, experienced, um, and learned about, but I keep having this weird thing of like, well, where do I start? How do I start? What is it going to look like? And I think what I need to do is I'm realizing is just freaking start. Like who cares what it looks like? Who cares if you sound like an idiot? And honestly, I'm the kind of person that if I put out content and I sound stupid, I don't really care. But it's something about that, just that initial, like, uh, I used to box, I used to be an amateur boxer. And some of the hardest things you can do in boxing is throwing the first punch. And I think there's something correlated to that. It's just getting just throwing that first punch. So I don't know, I'm kind of musing and rambling, but that just dawned on me that it has a tie to kind of that for me. So anyways, if you guys relate to this idea of just getting, of just needing to start and getting, not getting stuck on a starting point, let me know below if you've had that experience and in what ways. Okay. Habits have been a bit weird lately. I spent, I think most of quarter three focused on daily reading, um, meditating in the morning, getting my morning routine set and journaling. And I was like dang, like damn near a hundred percent on those habits. And I was really trying to test out like building these morning and evening routines and seeing how they impacted my well being. So I would get up at six, I would uh, do my meditation. I would, um, uh, do journaling, drink my water. I would kind of like have this little process. And while I liked the routine of it, cause I do thrive on routines like most of us do, I kept trying to journal and meditate and I did it consistently for three months and I did not feel like I was getting anything out of it. It wasn't, it wasn't really, you know, helping me. And I think giving something an effort for three months consistently is a good time frame to know even, and I was just like fine tooth combing, like trying to reflect Did I feel any difference Did it give me any, give me anything. And I, I can sit here and say for me, it really didn't. Now, um, I do enjoy the physical act of writing on paper and using highlighters and checking things off. And I do, I mean, that's why I like planners, but the act of journaling for some reason didn't really help me. So I don't, I'm not going to like throw that whole idea out of journaling being useful to me, but I, I'm like taking a pause from it and I really didn't do it much at all in November, a couple days I did and really trying to reevaluate what that looks for me, looks like for me. I think it might end up being more like reading a book and taking notes 
because what I think I really would benefit more from than documenting my day, like many do in journaling, is I document most of what I do here in my planners, and I don't even keep my planners every year. I throw them away. Um, I think more of how journaling could impact me is, or be beneficial to me, is if while I'm reading books that I find interesting, is having a notebook by me so that I can jot down notes. Because usually reading something or listening to something inspires thoughts and ideas that then I can share. So I think I need to take almost like a school approach to it versus a um, kind of introspective approach. And I actually did some research on like, is journaling for everybody and blah, blah, blah. And it really isn't, guys. So don't, if you have been trying to journal and you're like, I can't get this habit down or I don't really enjoy it, like don't, like, don't stress about it. Don't make it something you have to do because everybody says that journaling is going to change your life. And the same with meditating. I think meditating can be great. And I know there's a lot of science out there. I feel like I said this in another video. But if, um, if you aren't finding meditating after giving it a like, good old college try is not doing it for you, stop doing it. Like there's no point of continuing to force something that is not beneficial to you if you've truly given it 100% of an effort. And then it's also stepping back and going, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I should? Because this is what everybody says will work? And if that's the reason, if you've read, well, meditating will help with stress and journaling will help with this, yeah, for some people, really think about like, is that, what are you trying to get out of it? And is this the best tool to achieve that goal because sometimes it's not. Journaling is not for everybody. Meditating is not for everybody. You gotta find what works for you. Just give it a good college try. You know, obviously doing it once or twice is not gonna tell you if it's gonna work. I would say if you can give it a 30 to 90 day try, you're gonna have a better sense of if something's beneficial to you. So all of that to say, I did not journal or meditate at all basically for the whole entire month of November. Now, I kept my habit tracker in my bullet journal till about the end of the month, the last week or so, and then I just like didn't even bother. Um, so I stopped journaling. I think I journaled a handful of times maybe. I did not meditate at all. And I didn't read, and that was kind of disappointing to me because I kept trying to check out books at the library and our library had nothing that I wanted. So while I have a bunch of books that I could reread in my kind of personal library, I wasn't feeling motivated to read reread any books. So my reading is already back on track for December because I got a book finally from the library. Um, and I'm also trying not to buy books because I don't want more clutter. So that's why I'm get, trying to make sure I get them at the library. So the things I did do well was I continue to get up at 6 a.m. and I continue to go to bed by 10. I think those are integral to my health and well-being and I feel much better when I do that. And those were darn near 100%. Um, what helped and hurt, you know, with the time change, um, you know, with the daylight savings and kind of the sun coming up earlier and going down earlier, whatever, um, that did throw me off a little bit. Um, and I realized that I needed to just, we have the luxury obviously of not having to be to a job at a certain time. So I was able to kind of have a little bit more, oh, okay, this is why it's harder for me to get up, or this is why I'm feeling more tired earlier. And just kind of letting that um, seasonal change be okay. But I was still getting up in that 6 to 6.30 time range and going to bed between 10 to 10.30. Um, explain the journaling things. I'm going to keep up with my bedtime and my uh, wake time. Those work really well for me, and I will continue that through the next year. Um, what I'm going to do for this month, December, for other habits is what I'm going to call movement snacks or movement breaks and return to reading, but we'll talk about that in a second. This is a long video, guys. I apologize if you're bored to tears by now or you're like, what is it, like scrubbing through at two times speed because you need me to talk faster because I'm rambling. Okay, so projects. Started YNAB. Um, I got all of my mission board stuff done except for the dream category. So some of my mission board stuff is to-do related versus goal related, but personal. Still haven't set my 2020 goals. Bumped that over to December. I did tweak my habits a tad. Um, and scheduled uh, scheduled an adventure. Matt and I were realizing we weren't like doing anything out of the house and we needed to quit being hermits. So we did go on a hike and we did some other things. So that was good. Uh, home, we dropped off some recycling. I think I've told you guys before, like we don't have residential recycling here in Galton, which is super weird and frustrating. Um, make one new thing. We did make something new and I can't remember. I think I made, I don't know, something new. Maybe it was sourdough again. I can't remember. 
Um, health was followed up with the doctor, do the second test and schedule the colonoscopy. So that got done. Cultivate friendship, starting YNAB, put $140 into savings, took our holiday break, kept up with our weekly releases and focus on creating value with our content over on the business section. Mission is still to live simply. And for the dream big category, this category always I get hung up on. But originally I put down research for, continue research for home and garden stuff and work on a wellness planner. Um, I've kind of paused my research on home and garden stuff that was going to be really focused towards us getting a house and me being able to do that. I haven't been reading as much on that topic, so that's kind of paused. And then I did not spend any time working on a wellness planner idea. So I'm realizing right now as we're in the midst of tons and tons of releases for Inkwell Press and now Moxie Life, uh, coordinating products that it is really hard to be super innovative and in this space of creating a whole new product when we just our focus needs to be on getting stuff out for you guys so you can get your planners ready for the next year so all of that stuff got done um so next month december this month i'm gonna i really want to focus on decreasing my facebook time um I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook for personal reasons. It's for our print shop for a group. And what I'm realizing I do, I love our group. I love connecting with you guys in our Facebook group. It's probably one of my favorite parts of running the print shop. Um, but what I realize I do is if I'm not trying to get into a project and I feel stuck, I'm like, do, 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 go over to Facebook. Okay, let me interact. It's almost a, a really seemingly productive distraction. So I really need to set limits with myself around how much I'm going into our Facebook group and that way it'll allow, my, allow me to do other things that I'm not getting like super distracted by this like pull to do that. Um, like I said, work on 2020 goals, actually schedule the colonoscopy, uh, continue YNAB. Things I'm grateful for is definitely the new friendships that I'm creating and the opportunity to have social interaction and get the heck out of the house and not be a hermit. Um, the resources to take care of my health. It's super frustrating. We have super crappy insurance, as many Americans do, and um, I'm a very healthy person. Sometimes even when you're living a super healthy lifestyle, your body decides it doesn't want to do things it should and gives you issues. So while it's frustrating to have to pay a lot of money to take care of your health, um, especially when you do invest a lot in you know, living a healthy lifestyle, I am grateful that we do have the resources put aside so I can do the things that I need to do to make sure I'm okay. Um, and then the last thing is, um, what did I put? The insight from, from myself and others on business and content. Um, what does that mean? You ever write things and you don't know what they mean? We're just not even going to muse on that because I'm already at 22 minutes. So I rated the month at an eight. I don't really usually rate my months much lower than that because even when stuff sucks, I always think, you know, it could be a lot worse. And I know a lot of people out there are struggling with worse things than I am. So I try to have some perspective on that. And then I would say the month word is tiring. It was a very tiring month. It was stressful from a business and financial standpoint and the worry that comes with the ebb and flow of revenue. And um, just going to be real, it was a little tiring. So that was November. So then that brings us to December's um, mission board and goal setting. So after 12 months of using Inkwell Press, I finally realized I should draw lines on my mission board hexagons because otherwise I draw, you know, like upward. We should probably make these stickers with lines on them. If you want that, let me know below. Okay, so personal category, I'm back to reading daily. I wanted to keep that really simple and just get back into my habit of reading. And I should probably add on to that and start taking notes because I literally just finished a book and I was like, oh... I need to go back now and skim through that and take some notes. There was quotes and different things I want. And that's the one downfall of not buying books and being able to highlight them. So there's that. Um, Champy needs to order his doggy medicine. Social, we're just keeping simple with the intention of cultivating friendship. Um, I'm pretty proactive about trying to do that on a weekly basis, reaching out to people, but I also don't like to force it. So I like to keep this more intentional versus like an action step, a very hard and fast action step. Um, home, I didn't really put anything down. I'll probably play around with my sourdough again um, and just, you know, keeping up with our cleaning routine, which is fairly automated at this point. There's not too much stuff going on home related that's, you know, needs to be written down. So we're leaving this guy blank for right now. Health, uh, it's open enrollment, so I need to pick my insurance. I need to schedule my colonoscopy, which is now done. And I need to do, I'm going to start doing what's called, I'm going to call movement snacks or movement breaks. Um, most Americans, myself included, have jobs where we sit on our butts all day. And even though I am a very physically active person and I'm fit, 
I will find myself sitting at the desk, writing, connecting, doing work for hours without getting up. So this month, what I'm going to focus on is at least once during my like work shift, I'm going to get up and do some stress stretches and mobility and stuff like that. I eventually want to move this into possibly like once an hour type of thing, but baby steps. We're just going to start with at least once a day during my work shift to get up, move and stuff like that. Um, Financial, I need to make a transfer to our HSA, uh, officially sign up for YNAB, which I did, make our tax estimated sheet. So we pay quarterly taxes since we're self-employed and we put money over into a sinking fund so we have that to pull out when they're due each quarter. Um, but we need to take our, um, make a sheet, we make an Excel spreadsheet, Matt does, because he's like an Excel wizard. And based on our revenue for that month, uh, kind of like based on what our quarterlies are, he figures out how much we need to put away each month. Um, Cause when you're not getting consistent cash flow over every month, let's say you were gonna put, you know, a thousand dollars a month. Well, when your revenue is low during your slow season, a thousand dollars a month is gonna be too much. So we do it based on percentages. Anyways, that probably doesn't matter, but that's what that is. I need to pay for my labs, for my testing. Um, business, I need to finalize. I'm going to be testing out a three month online group training, um, for some of my old gym members to test out, to see if I do want to offer some kind of online coaching. They are people that I know I've coached before. So they're going to be my little pilot program if I get enough of them. So I need to finalize the details of that focus on our weekly releases. Like I said, my social limits on Facebook. Um, and then for dream big, I'm just going to put, be a resource. I'm still playing around with this idea of releasing, like a Jess YouTube and being kind of, again, sharing more information, but I'm in this like end of year reflection mode. I don't want to make any big steps right now. So we're just going to keep this simple. Oh my gosh, this was almost 30 minutes. You guys, I apologize. If you stayed with me, thanks. I appreciate you dedicating and committing to 30 minutes of me chatting. So let me know if you guys have questions. How was your November, um, do you find hearing my process of reflecting and goal setting helpful? Is there something else I can do with this whole video concept to make it more useful to you? Let me know. Um, yeah. And that's it guys. Have a great December and I will see you in the next video.